What we're going to look at now are abnormal atrial rhythms. David, w what are the abnormal atrial rhythms that we commonly see in the coronary care situation? Um, we may see one of three. It can either be an atrial tachycardia or a fast atrial rate, an atrial flutter or an atrial fibrillation. So we'll now look at those at the monitor. So this is what we call an atrial tachycardia, or some people may call it an SVT, supraventricular tachycardia. It differs from sinus rhythm in that the impulses are generated from an ectopic focus in the atria rather than the SA node. Um, what it's going to cause is an increased heart rate, as we can see here, and an abnormally shaped P wave, which we can just see. Because of the abnormal transmission through the atrial muscle? Yeah. We may also see um, some degree of AV block as the um, atrial rate increases, the AV node may well be unable to keep up. Mm -hmm. How would the patient deal with this sort of condition? Um, they would tend to feel very ill, it would be quite hypotensive again, and this will either require um, a vagal manoeuvre, drugs, or cardioversion. The second rhythm that we'll look at is atrial flutter. Um, it may well share the same mechanism as atrial tachycardia, or it may result from depolarization circul circling the right atrium. So the, it just keeps going back round. Within the atria itself. Within the atria itself. Um, it differs in that the atrial rate is much higher and as we can see here, we have two atrial beats for every QRS. So the sore tooth is, is, is generated. The yeah. sore tooth effect is generated by atrial contractions. Yeah. Well, well, a atrial depolarization. Do anyway. Depolarization. Um, but the AV node. The reason that the that the QRS rate is much lower is the AV node can't keep up with this increased atrial depolarization. So you've got two atrial contractions to one ventricular, ventricular contraction. contraction. Yeah. That will, we will call that a two to one AV block. And how would the patient deal with this? They may well feel all right or they may be hypertensive again. We need to treat the patient rather than what we see on the monitor. The last rhythm, atrial living rhythm that we'll look at, is quite a common one, especially in the elderly, and that's atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is a rapid chaotic depolarization occurring throughout the atria. Um, we won't see any P waves at all. Um, because the, the atria are, are like fluttering, really, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. Um, and the, uh, the ECG shows um, low amplitude oscillation before each QRS. And these oscillations are about four to 600 per minute. It's very fast, isn't it? It is. And so therefore, the, again, the AV node can't keep up and that's why the the signals are then irregular and we see this irregularly irregular heart rate which is um, indicative of atrial fibrillation. And clearly the, the patient's pulse will be irregular as well. It would and and um, it would also decrease effective atrial contractility and cardiac output may drop by 10 to 15 percent. So with that sort of drop, the patient might still feel reasonably okay? T again, it depends how long they've been in atrial fibrillation. Um, if it's a new atrial fibrillation, they may well feel hypertensive and come in with a history of falls or palpitations. If it's a long-standing AF um, and controlled, then they may feel quite normal. Yeah. Just notice one thing. What, what, what's, this, what's this symbol here on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, Dave? This 200 joules. 200 joules. Because we're watching on a monitor that's also a defibrillator, um, the machine always defaults so that it has 200 joules oh, of energy to, to charge up straight away as soon as you switch it on. Mm. And what, what's, what does this lead to signify? So that's the lead, the, the position that we're actually looking at the rhythm from. We have, um, so this is limb lead two, and this is the amplitude that we're actually, or the gain that, that we're, we're looking at underneath. And we tend to um, 
monitor people on Limley too because it gives us the it allows us to see P waves on the monitor much better than any of the other leads. And you get positive deflections of the yeah. waves. So that concludes our discussion on atrial abnormal rhythms.